Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the MSU Museum. I am Mark Auslander. Welcome to our Afrofuturist Homecoming, honoring the extraordinary art of, uh, of Black Kirby, of, uh, of our two remarkable artists who have been here the entire, uh, the entire week. Uh, John Jennings and Stacy Robinson have been in more classes than we can count. Yes. We don't make you work when you come to this. And we, we are so proud and excited to be doing this event with uh, MSU Black Alumni and uh, uh, black, the Black Alumni Executive Board and with the association. Uh, it's been a dream of ours and we are going in a few minutes to unveil four important works by Black Kirby that are Museum staff's been working and excitedly framing these extraordinary four works. Uh, but here to tell us a little bit about the event is our director of development here at the MSU Museum, Chongyana Kanfora. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome everyone to the MSU Museum's first ever Afrofuturist Homecoming. Thank you to our co-sponsors for this event, the MSU Department of English, and my alumni association, the Michigan State University Black Alumni Incorporated, who have a proud 39-year history of working to enhance educational opportunities and the quality of life for Black alumni, students, faculty, and staff here at MSU. Today, for me, is a dual celebration. Um, the unveiling of the new art by Black Kirby um, that we are adding to our collections under the guidance of our new newest curator, Dr. Julian Chambliss. But also, a <laughs> but also a celebration of the important milestone for the museum, um, his appointment um, as the first Val Berryman Curator of History, Dr. Chambliss is a historian, an author, an urban activist, and he is widely known for his scholarship on Afrofuturism, the Black imaginary, and Black superheroes. He is a leading figure in the critical digital humanities, and he has organized museum exhibitions and digital spaces that explore community, belonging, and power, and we couldn't be more delighted to have him on the MSU Museum team. We thank the Department of English and the College of Arts and Letters for making this possible, and I would also like to acknowledge the generous donors that have contributed to the Berryman Endowment. Everyone here is invited to come back for an exciting event on February 15th, 2020, for Dr. Chambliss's inaugural Val Berryman Lecture, which is scheduled for the day that would have been Val's 80th birthday. We hope that you will mark your calendars and join us to honor this wonderful legacy and that you will also come back to the museum in the summer of 2020 for the opening of the exhibit Beyond Black Panther, Visions of Afrofuturism in American Comics. Related to that, I'd also like to take a moment to draw your attention to a brand new opportunity to support the museum and Dr. Chambliss's work like but Beyond Black Panther and more by giving to the Black Fantastic Arts and Culture Fund. It is through this fund that you can partner with the museum to offer MSU students and our local community youth the chance to have close encounters with works of Afrofuturist art, films, literature, dance, and music, to participate in expressive arts workshops, and to collaborate with and learn from artists and residents, like our distinguished guests, Drs. John Jennings and Stacey Robinson. We cannot ask ourselves and our youth to struggle for change and fight anti-blackness without a vision of what the world could and should be like. As we nurture our future scientists, engineers, teachers, musicians, poets, and presidents. As we all know, where there is no vision, the people perish. <laughs> there is information on how to get involved in the Black Fantastic Arts and Culture Project on the back of your program, or you can come see me after the conclusion of today's event. I would also like to invite you to join us um, for another exciting event, um, Science on a Sphere's Ribbon Cutting on November 15th, which will be happening in the gallery to your right that is under construction. 
Um, there are ongoing opportunities to support this important project as well. So please see me if you would like to learn more about it and getting involved. Thank you. So Dean Christopher Longer, Dean of Arts and, Arts and Sciences, is coming from, a, from an important meeting, but we'll be here and we will share a few words with us. We are very grateful to the College of Arts and Letters uh, where, uh, uh, for supporting this arrangement that makes it possible for Dr. Channels to serve as, uh, as the first Bell Barrett curator. But at this point, I would like, and we would like to invite uh, the members of the executive board of MSU EA uh, Incorporated uh, to come up and each perhaps stand by uh, uh, one of the prints, and then we'll ask you to uh, unveil, with a little help from Alicia and from uh, Eric Ponder, who's uh, in the library, uh, uh, to unveil one print at a time so we can see them, and then we will uh, 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 perhaps Chandra, if you care to say some words, some of uh, uh, welcome and greetings from, from the association. All right, so if we could ask uh, uh, members of the, of the board to come up, please. And if, if it's all right, if uh, somebody could, could assist Felicia over here, maybe. And why don't we start with the one on the far left where Chandra is? Uh, which is from the uh, spooky world we're calling number number two. Uh, if you could take that off now. And then, uh... So with that in mind, when, when I was out, off in this position, uh, my first thought was, 
oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> um, not because I didn't think I could do it, but because I was like, I didn't know how this would quite work. And again, the college parson led was very open to the idea, but more importantly, when Mark contacted me, I thought to myself, you know, I've been thinking about some things, and I think this would really help, help me do those things. And the fact that the, the museum can be an archive, the fact that the stories of African Americans, the stories of Black Fantastic, the stories that have been key to the liberation, not just simply of that black people, but really a liberation narrative of the American experience, can be documented through the museum. And such a historic institution, it's such a historic educational institution, engaged in this work is very meaningful. So what to pick? <laughs> That's not easy. Uh, I think, you know, the universe sometimes works in mysterious ways. I was already going to bring John Jennings and Stacey Patterson to MSU. We had talked about it. I've known them for quite a long time. I've always admired the great transformative work that they do. As a scholar of comics, scholar of the African American experience, the work they do as Black, as Black, as Black Kirby, the collaboration that they have, to me is very important. One of the things that they often talk about when they talk about the, the origin of the collaboration is they talk about Marvel Comics, and they talk about the experience of Jack Kirby, a man of Jewish heritage who saw his legacy sort of erased from the public record. And the inspiration for Black Kirby was, you know, they were treating him like a black person. Let's, let's do something with that. And I always thought that was super smart and super cool. And of course, as a fan of Marvel Comics, yeah, I'm a Marvel kid. Everything that they do always resonates with me. So there's no mistake, I'm the one that's like, yeah, we need these, and I'm gonna get more black. <laughs> right? like, black has always been a personal favorite. Right <laughs> so in, in this work, I think we can see some important cornerstones of what we see as a kind of emerging narrative around Afrofuturism. One, the sort of deep engagement with the black experience, the understanding of the multiple pathways that's gotten us to where we are, and the infinite futures that are available to us. And also, of course, the reference to popular culture and comics gives us an opportunity to think about the strong and important areas of popular culture that we see every day, and how diversity within them can be transformative, right? The first thing I remember reading is a comic, it wasn't a black comic, but it was a comic. And I still like those comics. But those first black characters that you see in comics are often transformative. You can put yourself into those characters and their adventures and their struggles for justice, the struggle for truth, the struggle for social change is something that resonates with a lot of people of color. So it's great for me to be able to add these yeah. pieces to the collection. It's been awesome, wonderful, Yes, yeah, a little exhausting <laughs> to have John and Stacey here this entire week, but as I said to them, and I do believe their conversations with our faculty, our students, our community has been transformative. People will be talking about it for years to come. So it's with a lot of appreciation to Mark, to the museum, to MSU, to my department, that I say thank you. And also, do I get to introduce them? Oh, sweet. Please. Sorry. Yeah. 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 You do know it because the visual narrative of Afrofuturism in the contemporary world, the one when you Google Afrofuturism, the images that you see, that's their images. That is, they are the people who are making that sort of visual culture real. So it's my great honor to introduce them to you and ask them to say a couple of words. So, John and Stacy, please. <laughs>
Um, yeah, you start. Yeah, um, first of all, thank you all for having us here. It has been an exhausting week, but it's been a, a very energetic week, and as, as I've been telling people, this week came right on time, as, as next week I have to, um, yeah, I was going to say perform, but my colloquium talk at Harvard next week as my Nazir Jones fellow uh, this academic year. And it's been a stressful time as I, I, I'm away from my friends and family in Albany, New York, and in Champaign, Illinois, where I teach. And I'm in this place of, 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 kind of um, living in Somerville, you know, in the Harvard area, and I haven't settled in yet. But, and it's been stressful, but this trip, which I was dreading, was exactly what I needed. It's like, universe, God, creator, it was like, you know what, Stacey? This is what you need, <laughs> you know? And, and coming here to be able to hang out with my friends, and Kenitra and, and Julian, and, and to um, hang out with students and grad, you know, undergrads and graduates, it's been very humbling. You know, it, it's humbling to see yourself in a place where, um, see students in the same place that I was only a few years ago when my professors would bring in really established professionals. And I'm like, wow, I want to be them one day. And then the students that I'm talking to now, I'm like, I'm on the other side of that. It's very, very humbling. So I want to thank you all for bringing me here. And John, I get to hang out with my best friends and kind of de-stress. Um, and I'm, I'm really honored to be, to, to have my work that, in a collection. We do this for fun. You understand what I'm saying? But we also do it to exercise, like some, some really powerful, and I say exercise as in we gotta put our practice to work, but also exercise, like ah, exercise, right? We gotta get it out, or it's like, or, ooh, or else, right? So um, we're really honored that what we do as a, as a collective, as a collaborative team, as best friends, um, is archive. And, and, and people take it not only seriously, but they, they understand. Because <laughs> I think our minds are really kind of wide open and crazy and out there. But it's really honored when other people get it. And not only get it, but they want to archive it and share it uh, for future generations. So thank you very much. Well, one of the many reasons why we created Black Kirby is Black Kirby essentially is a, uh, a construct from another gen from another time. Like, what if Jack Kirby was African American? How would the politics of the time uh, affect the work that he would be creating? Would he? Be, what kind of cultural signifiers would he be drawing from? You know. And so, to a certain degree, um, you know, it's the basis of most science fiction and fantasy is the what if, right? Um, and I think as uh, African American folk or black people in this country, I think the what if is something that actually is something that's a very driving force. Whenever people ask me about you know defining Afrofuturism, the first thing I say is well, Afrofuturism isn't necessarily a genre or a system of, of, of considerations around making it's a destination. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think I don't necessarily you know if it matters that much about the semantics about <laughs> what it is, what it isn't, but when it is, you know, you know, because we're still in a space where we're trying to get to that to, to that mountaintop, so to speak. Whenever I talk about, um, whenever I talk about like aspiration, you know, uh, I think about the notion of, you know, the people um, who decided, uh, our ancestors who decided, you know what, I'm tired of in, being in this space. I want to get to this next, this next plane. So that's to me an Afrofuturist vision. I would say like the first slave that said, you know what, I'm, this slavery thing isn't working for me. <laughs> Perhaps I should get out. You know? <laughs> that's an Afrofuturist. That's that's an Afrofuturist. I'm thinking about this black future. Or when I talk about you know the notion that a lot of the uh, the folk who are centered in this conversation are from the South, like people like you know Sun Ra was born in the South. You know people people like um, George Clinton, he's from the South. Janelle Ma Maurice White from Earth Wind Fire, he's in the South. You know so you know or Dr. King himself. I mean if you want to if you want to take out your phones and try to like find the mountaintop on your GPS. You won't be able to do it because that particular coordinate is in another time, it's in another space, and hasn't happened yet, right? So I think that the work that we're making, you know, is actually 
visual indexes of those particular types of futures, you know. Um, as Stacy was talking about, it's, it's always, I mean, I, I love the people that brought me up, Julian, Kenitra, Ben as well, Ben, ben, ben Dyke and Art. Um, and it's been wonderful being here. Uh, I, I was joking earlier, like uh, today, I teach, I teach at the University of California Riverside and like we're on a quarter system. Today is our first day of class. So I had to send out a, you know, yeah, um, I'll see y'all next week. <laughs> because I'm dealing with something very important because I get to introduce uh, my best friend's uh, Harvard talk next week too. So I'm actually following to Boston to do that, you know, so at, at the Hutchins Center. Um, so I'm really excited about it. I'm very proud of him as well. And um, also, you know, it's difficult because, you know, um, my wife and I just had um, a little boy over the summer. He's three and a half months. His name, his name is Jackson Kirby. So, <laughs> but um, the other thing too is that he, he spells it, um, we spell it J Excellent, you know, and my grandfather Albert, was, he was, he didn't acquire the, the ability to read or write. And he literally signed his name with X. Mm -hmm. So it's a way for us to actually name him after my grandfather as well. But also the X is a crossroads. The X is an intersection. And everything interesting and dope and fun and smart and wonderful and scary is at the middle of that intersection. And that's, that's, and that's the thing, that's a space. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we are cool. I'm sorry. Anyway. But you see what I'm saying? And so that's where a lot of our work resides, is at the intersections between politics and art and between uh, life, death, living, you know, those types of ideas. Um, I, would, I would hope that people, enter, enter, you know, that see the work, uh, engage with it actively, that it uh, disturbs you in some ways, it moves you in some ways, because as James Baldwin says, um, artists are here to disturb the peace. And sometimes that disturbance is a beautiful disturbance. So thank you so much for having us. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. is now officially the uh, Aubrey and Leslie Endowed Chair of Literary Studies. Here in the Which we are still at the MSU, MSU Museum in shock over. <laughs> Richie even gave a call out to, uh, to the museum and to uh, the work celebrating Conjure, uh, the art and uh, the, the, uh, the art and, and the literary achievements of women of color who celebrate uh, fantasy. And that will be an upcoming conference here. And we are looking forward to uh, having all of you back on campus for, for that uh, and for an associated exhibition. And I just wanted to share something uh, as you were talking about your grandfather. I was thinking about my own grandfather and my dad in reference to Jack Kirby and now Black Kirby. So my dad, who is now 89 years old, uh, sends his greetings. He grew up on the Upper West Side in D.C. and apparently ran as a child the largest. Uh, sort of underground comic library on the Upper West Side, including a lot of uh, Jack Kirby. So he understood as a Jewish kid or a, in a progressive family in DC, something in that work that spoke to the experience of being inside and outside at the same time. And later on, Jack Kirby became very important, I would say, to progressives in New York because he refused in the 50s uh, to go along with the dominant anti-communist de demonization of early civil rights activists, of labor activists, and so forth. I mean, he, and he suffered for a bit. So there is that fascinating connection that was exactly at the point my dad remembers that his own uh, father, my grandfather, went to prison for refusing to hand over names to the House of American Activities Committee. And, um, and that spirit of uh, of the superhero comics that demanded that we actually live up to the true ideals uh, of this country, which have been so deeply portrayed for centuries at the same time, uh, that has always meant something to our family. And now to see that tradition continued in this brilliant, extraordinary way is just breathtaking. So um, thank you for, uh, for, for that. And uh, I know we love all the works, but 
I think everybody's on that keeps on going to vote. Right? <laughs> but because both Julian and my 15-year-old nephew of Milo had to explain to me the reference <laughs> to uh, Galactus. Milo still can't believe that his uncle, who was a professor and museum director, was so ignorant not to know who the most important antagonist of the Fantastic Four are. <laughs> so, uh, but he's working on it. They're working on educating all of us that generation. Uh, and I feel, yes, this is a, all of this work is a critical interrogation of the past, but it's also giving us a sense of possible futures of the mountain top, as you said, and that is the greatest gift that we need. So it is thrilling for the museum to be here, to work with MSUBA and all our other friends. There is uh, food, please, and yes? I would, I don't want to say it here, but I would like to say a few words on the Could you come up on, on a, Dear colleague of ours, who's an associate, associate dean in the College of Arts and Letters, will say, say, say a few words. Thank you. And I know Chris really would like to be here today. He was talking about coming yesterday, and I know he's just gotten hung up, so I really apologize that I'll go like this. <laughs> and I'll be like, Chris. Um, um, uh, but I would like to um, really thank um, both of you, Stacey Robinson and John Jennings, for spending a week here, um, sh really educating myself personally, because this is my field, and I just feel so honored to have you here. Um, wow, um, Afrofuturism is something that should have been recognized by science fiction studies a long time ago, and is a long time in coming. Um, and I, I want to thank Julian Chambliss, having you come here to Michigan State University has been delightful, just absolutely delightful. And Kenitra Books, it, it took you a little bit to get here, but we're <laughs> we are so happy to have you here, too. And, and just what you two are doing for Afrofuturism on this campus already has been absolutely amazing. It's a breathtaking. Um, and thank you so much to the MSU Museum, and Mark Auslander, um, and the wonderful woman who spoke earlier, and I don't, I don't remember. John, 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 thank you so much. Um, it is an honor to have these prints, um, and we, you are always welcome here at MSU. We'll be back. Okay. We have to get big sure all the food's eaten. Please come up and look at the wonderful at the wonderful art. I'm sure the artists are happy to engage in discussions. There are exhibitions to look at if you have time. Enjoy homecoming weekend and uh, go great. Oh,